Hello students, hope that all of you are fine. I am here with the continuation of class 9 physics chapter 2. Our second chapter is force and laws of motion. Force and laws of motion. There are two parts in this chapter. The first one is force. Then we will come to the second part, laws of motion. What is force? It's a very common word. You may just study it from your class 4th or 5th onwards. And the very simple way the teacher might have taught you about force in smaller classes. Force is a push or a pull. Is it? This is the common definition that the teachers used to tell you or teach you in smaller classes. Force is a push or a pull. But is it exact? I may say it is not exactly correct. It can be a force, it can be a pull or a <coughs> push, but this is not the exact definition of force. Have you ever seen a force? Did you ever taste a force? Did you ever feel a force? The answer is no. You cannot see a force. You cannot taste a force. You cannot even feel a force. Then you may think it is wrong. No, I have seen a force. How? <clears throat> when I pushed a toy car, the toy car started moving. When I stopped a moving football by applying the force, then the football is stopped. When I hit the cricket ball with my bat, then it went to the boundary. So you may say you have seen the force, you have felt the force. But my dear student, these are not force. These are the effects of force. I repeat, these are the effects of force. By applying force, you can make a body, a stationary body to move. When you kick on a football, the <clears throat> football that was stationary, then the football start moving. So by applying force, we can make a body at rest to start motion. By applying force, you can stop a rolling football. By applying force, you can stop it. So, you can stop the motion of a body by applying force. You can change the shape of the body by applying force. Shape of the body can be changed by applying the force. This one, duff. When the duff is made for making chapatis, you can see every time the shape of the duff is changing. So many other examples. When you apply force from both the sides of a balloon, air blown balloon, its shape can change. When you push a spring from both the sides, it compresses. When you release, it expands. So, change in shape, change in color, change in stage, these are the effects of force. So remember the difference between force and effects of force. So we can say force is a push or pull which can change the state of a body, which can change the magnitude of the speed or velocity of a body, which can change the shape of a body, which can change the color of a body. So these are the effects of force. So when you Say the definition, add this also along with it. It's a push or pull which can make these, these, these changes on a body. Okay, this is what I have to teach you about force as an introduction. Now there are two types of forces, balanced force and unbalanced force. Balanced force and unbalanced force. What do you mean by balanced force and unbalanced force? Suppose, 
there is a heavy box kept on this table. Now you ask a small boy to apply force and make it move. He may not be able to make that body to move. What is the reason? Now, did he apply force? Yes. He has applied with all his might. He has pushed this box. But he was unable to make this box to move. What is the reason? The force applied by him was not sufficient to overcome another force which was exerted by the box in the opposite direction. What is that force? Force of friction. Force of friction. Whenever any body is coming in contact with any surface, there is a force acting between the two surfaces which is called force of friction. So when the box is kept on the table, there is force of friction acting between the surface of the table and the surface of the box. The force applied by the boy was not enough to overcome that force of friction. So even though the boy has applied force, the box was not moved. Such forces are called balanced force because the force applied by the boy is balanced by the force exerted by the friction. Similarly, whenever you see anything on your table, remember there is force acting on it. Force of gravity is acting on every object on this earth which is pulling it downwards. Our next chapter is gravitation. In that chapter, we will learn more about this force of gravitation. So, remember, if you see a stationary body, remember, there is force acting on this body. Which force? Force of gravity is pulling it downward. That's why, if I remove my palm, if I remove my hand, it will fall down. Because, force of gravity is pulling it downwards. So, in this way, there are so many forces acting on different bodies which is not visible because it is called balanced force. The force of friction and the force of gravity are called balanced. So we are unable to see any effect of that force. So there are so many such forces which is invisible or which will not make any effect of that force. Such forces are called balance force. Now you call one more boy or two, three more boys and ask them to push together that box. When two, three boys together push, it, push the box, then the box will move. This time what happened? The force exerted by the boys was more than the force exerted by the force of friction in the opposite direction. So when the applied force is more than the force of friction, then that box was able to move certain distance in the direction where the force was applied by the boys. That force is called unbalanced force. The force applied by the boys were greater than the force exerted by the friction in the opposite direction. So the body will move in that direction where the force was more. Such type of forces are called unbalanced force. Actually, in our normal language, whenever we talk about force, we mean unbalanced force. But remember in physics, it is not, simple force is not enough. Because I told you, even if you see a body at rest, Remember, there are forces acting on it, but they are balanced with each other, so there is no movement, no effect of force seen on it, but there are forces acting on it. So whenever we see any effect of force, that is due to unbalanced force. So unbalanced forces can make a change in state of the body, a change in motion, Magnitude of the velocity or speed will be changed, etc, etc. So, whenever we talk about the effect of force, remember that force is unbalanced force. So, 
for the first part of that chapter is about force. Then force are two types, balanced force and unbalanced force. Balanced forces are the forces which get balanced with each other. So there is no effect of force seen on the body. Unbalanced forces. One force will be greater than the other force. So the, the effect of that force is visible. In that direction it is visible where the force is greater. So there are so many other examples for balanced forces. Suppose there is a box and there is a string X and there is a string Y. If you push towards X then it will move towards this direction. If you push it towards Y it will move towards this direction. But if two people with equal force are pushing this string one towards X and one towards Y with equal force then what will happen to this box? It will not move. It will not move. There are so many examples. When you exert equal force equal force then the body will not move on either side. But when you are pushing it only one side towards X what is happening? Your applied force is greater than the force of friction. So it can go towards X. Same towards Y. But if you are applying equal force towards X and Y together, then the body will remain at rest because it is balanced force. So unbalanced force and balanced force. I think the point is clear to you. Now I am coming to the next topic that is laws of motion. There are three very important laws of motion. Once again, all these three laws of motion are given by Sir Isaac Newton. Without Sir Isaac Newton, there is no physics. All the important properties, principles, especially regarding motion is given by Isaac Newton. So the three equations of motion which we have studied in the previous chapter V is equal to U plus AT, S is equal to UT plus half AT square, V square minus U square equal to 2 AS. These three equations of motions were also given by Newton. Now we are going to study about three laws of motion. Before I come to the statement of first law of motion, I will give you some examples. I will make you to feel what is first law of motion. Then only you will get it exact idea. All of you are familiar with your school bus. When you are stepping into the bus from your bus stop in the morning and the driver starts the bus and taking the bus forward, what do you feel? Especially if you are standing, what do you feel? You will feel falling backward. As soon as the bus started moving forward, you feel falling backward. Is it? Yes, you might have felt it several times. Now the bus is in motion. Now the next stop has come, reached. And some drivers suddenly apply the brake. Or in some need of emergency, Drivers apply the brake suddenly. When sudden brakes are applied in bus or any vehicle, what do you feel? You feel falling forward. Is it? All of you might have felt it. So when a bus is moving forward, the passengers fall backward. When a moving bus is suddenly applied the brake and stops, the passengers fall forward. Why it is so? It is due to Newton's first law of motion. Now I am coming to that statement. The exact statement. But before that, remember this example when I say the statement. Okay, before 
telling you the exact statement. Now I will explain why it is so. Because every body has a tendency to maintain its state. Maintain its state. State means state of rest or state of motion. Now I am at state of rest. So my body has a tendency to continue in the same state of rest unless and until an external force is not applied on me. If somebody push me, I will change my state of rest. Otherwise, everybody has a tendency to maintain its state of rest or state of motion. When the passengers were sitting in the bus, and the bus is suddenly started and started moving forward. The passengers fall backward. It is because the passengers have the tendency to remain at the state of rest. So they will continue the same state of rest until and unless an external force is not applied on it. Similarly, when the passengers were in motion, when the bus was in motion, by applying sudden brake, the passengers fall forward. It is also because of the same reason, a body in motion will continue in motion until and unless an external force is not applied on it. This is Newton's first law of motion. Now I will give you more examples of Newton's first law of motion. Look here, two slopes are kept here facing each other two slopes and release a marble ball marble ball goti from the top of this first slope what will happen to it it will roll down roll down roll down and reach here will it suddenly stop there after reaching at the bottom no it will not stop here but it will roll up on the second slope to certain height then it will come down then while coming down it may come back again on the first slope so the marble ball that rolls down after reaching the ground will not stop there suddenly why a body in motion will continue in motion until and unless an external force is not applied on it so this body which was in motion will have the tendency to continue its motion. That why it will continue in motion. You might have seen it or you can do it and experience it. Another example, those who are playing carom, carom board and coins. Yes, you keep all the coins at the center of the carom board, one above the other. You make it as a pile. Keep all the coins as a pile at the center. And take your striker and hit the bottom one, only the last one, the bottom one. When you strike the bottom one, the last coin with the striker, what will happen to that coin and what will happen to the remaining coins? You might have seen only the bottom one will be moved away by the striker. The remaining coins will remain there as it is. Reason. All the above ones were in the state of rest. And by Newton's first law of motion, the body at rest will remain at rest. Because the external force was not applied on the above coins. The external force was applied on the bottom one. So that is more. The remaining one were at the state of rest and they want to continue in the same state of rest. Another example. Take a glass, cover it with a cardboard or <clears throat> cover it with a cardboard and keep a 5 rupee coin. Keep a 5 rupee coin or any rupee coin. 5 rupee coin is little thicker. So better keep a 5 rupee coin on the cardboard and now you may flip the cardboard, flip only the cardboard 
and see what happens. The cardboard will fly away because the external force is applied on the cardboard. But the fiber peak coin will fall into the glass. Why? That fiber peak coin was in the state of rest. So it has the tendency to continue in the same state of rest. So cardboard will fly away but the coin will fall into the glass. Another example of Newton's law of motion, first law of motion. Now there are so many, so many day to day related examples for explaining Newton's first law of motion. Another example you might have seen, when the daily passengers get down from the train before it is completely stopped, on the stations you can see, before the train stops completely, the daily passengers may get down. Did you notice how do they get down? In which direction they get down? And what do they do after getting down from the train? Number one, they will always get down in the same direction of the train moving. Number two, after getting down, they will keep on walking for or running for some time. Why? When the train is in motion, we are also in the state of motion. So due to Newton's first law of motion, our body has the tendency to continue in motion. So, if you do anything against this, we will fall and will get hurt. So, by getting down in the same direction of the train and continue running, we are also supporting our body to keep in motion. So, you will not get hurt. If you get down in the opposite direction and stop suddenly, surely you will fall and will get hurt. So, keep this point in your mind. In case of an emergency, if you are asked to get out of a moving bus or car or train, you have to get down in the same direction of the vehicle and don't stop there, keep on running. In this way, we are helping our body to continue in motion. So, I conclude, Newton's first law of motion states that a body at rest will remain at rest. A body in motion will continue in motion until and unless an external force is not applied on it. So in all these examples we have seen, every body resists its state of rest or state of motion. Is it? So a body at rest, how the tendency to continue in the same state of rest? It doesn't want to change its state. Passenger sitting in a stationary bus is falling backward when the bus moves forward. Why? The body is showing its resistance not to move forward. That's why it is falling backward telling that I want to be in rest. I want to continue in rest. So every body resists its change in stage. This resistance is known as Inertia. Inertia. I N E R T I A. Inertia is that tendency of the body due to which it resists its change in state. That state can be state of rest or of motion. Same example, you can understand it by that example of bus. From stationary, if the bus moves forward, Due to that resistance, passengers are falling backward. Inertia due to rest. Now the bus is in motion. Sudden breaks, passengers are falling forward. Reason? The body will resist the change of state. Now the state is state of motion. So it wants to continue in the same state of motion. So if we suddenly tries to make our body to stop, it will not accept it. It will resist that chain. So the body will show that I want to be in motion. So the body will fall forward. This falling forward or falling backward is due to inertia of the body. So what is inertia? The property of a body to resist its state. You can write an example either the state of rest or the state of motion. This Property of the body is known as inertia. So, 
first law of motion is also known as law of inertia. First law of motion is also known as law of inertia. Now, one more point. Inertia of a body is directly proportional to its mass. A heavy body will have higher value of inertia. Very easy to understand. You are pushing a, what is called a bullock cart. And with the same force you are pushing a train. Can you make a train to move? No. But can you make a bullock cart to move? Yes. Reason? Bullock cart having less mass has less inertia. So even though it resists the state, change in state, our force is enough to overcome that inertia. So lesser mass, less inertia, the bullock cart can move. Train with huge mass, huge inertia, so the applied force is not enough to overcome that inertia, so train will not move. So on heavier bodies, it is difficult to make a, a motion, to make a heavy body to move by less force. Reason, heavier the body, larger is the inertia. So remember, inertia of a body is directly proportional to its mass. If the mass of the body is more, inertia will be more. So inertia more means its resistance property ability will be more. So more force is required to make it move or to make it stop if it is moving. So that's all about Newton's first law of motion is also known as law of inertia. The statement is a body at rest will remain at rest and a body in motion will continue in motion until and unless an external force is not applied on it. So many examples were discussed. There are so many other examples. When we see the questions, we may come across some more examples. So, thank you for watching this video. That's all for today. Please go through these portions once again and take care of you. Thank you.